Hi everyone, welcome to week seven. We are working on subtraction for our mathematics this week. And today I'm going to be teaching you or working on the strategy of subtracting by bridging to 10. So today we are learning to subtract by bridging to 10. Our success criteria includes that we can petition numbers using number facts, we can jump back to 10, and we can use our number facts to jump the rest of the way. Our subtraction word wall includes the words counting on, counting back, combine, plus, add, take away, minus, the difference between, total, more than, less than, double, equals, is equal to, is the same as, number sentence and strategy. So I hope that you can use all of these words as you are using the subtraction strategy this week. So to help us with our maths today, we're going to need a 10 frame. And there is a 10 frame in your Google Classroom uh, for maths today. You can um, access that or you can make your own 10 frame by drawing um, two rows of five. And you can make a couple of 10 frames to help you with this and you might need some counters. You could use um, blocks or um, something that you have around the house, some coins maybe um, might be helpful or your toys. Whatever's going to fit in your 10 frame would be something that would help you with your activities for maths today. Um, and then when you get uh, we're going to be making some numbers and putting them on these 10 frames. So um, have a look and this is what we're going to do first, the things that we need to think about as we come to each number. So we need to compare our results with a family member or um, have a look at one of the next slides and you're going to compare your own results as you do the work today. Um, and you're going to decide, have you made it the same way as the picture or as somebody else? What can you see that is the same or different? So these are all the questions that you're going to ask yourself and you might like to come back to this page, um, but there will be, there will be prompts um, along the way that can help you as well. Okay, so the first number that you need to make on your 10 frame is a 7. So on your 10 frame, take out your coins and make 7. Once you've done that, you can pause the video if you're making the 10 frame. And then once you've done that, you're going to compare your results with the results on the 10 frame shown in the video. Okay, so what can you see? What is the same and what is different? I wonder if yours look the same as the two different 10 frames that are on the screen now. So we can describe this in different ways. So in the first 10 frame, the top row has four and the bottom row has three. We can count this by counting by twos, two, four, six, and then one, So, we, which makes seven. In this 10 frame, we can see that there are four together and three together because four and three make seven. So we can see different ways that we can make seven. Another thing that we can see, the top row has five and the bottom row has two. So now we know some more number facts. Five plus two equals seven. Okay, so this is just some different ways that we can make the same number. Because when we're bridging to 10, we're going to need to make some different combinations of numbers. So that's why we're working on these at the moment. 
So are there any other ways to make seven? Have you made it differently? Have a think. Have you made it differently? Could I make it differently next time? How could I put it on my 10 frame to look different to these? And how can I remember some different facts about making the number seven? So it'd be great to see if you wanna add some photos or just draw a picture of how you've made your 10 frame. Okay, you can move your counters away and we're now going to make the number eight on your 10 frame. See if you can make the number eight. Have a think of an easy way to make eight or maybe you've got a tricky way to make eight. Okay, let's take a look now. All right, what can we see? So first, we can see in the first 10 frame that it's got five up the top, in the top row, and three. So we know five and three makes eight. We can also see six. So we've got six here, and then we've got two. So two and six make eight. We can count it by twos, two, four, six, eight. Okay, let's take a second, a look at the second 10 frame and see if it's different. Okay, so this one is, um, has two rows of four. So four plus four equals eight. And we can count by two again. So two, four, six, eight. Okay. So I wonder if you can see the differences between these two 10 frames and the one that you made at home. I wonder if it looks the same or different. And I wonder if you've made a new number fact. Okay, so try this number with two 10 frames. So once you've got your two 10 frames, the number that we're going to work with is number 12. So you need to make 12 on two 10 frames and then take a look at, or pause the video until you've done that and then take a look at the rest of the video. All right, so we've got three different ways that we've made 12 here. So the first one, we've got two groups of six. So six and six make 12. We've got um, columns. We've got four in this column, four in this column, and four in this column. Um, and so we've got three columns. So three fours, or we can say three plus three plus three plus three. There's lots of different ways we can look at it. It's all different ways that we can make it. Okay. And then in our yellow 10 frame, we've got, I can see a group of four over here. And then I feel like I can see another one here and another one here. So we've got four and four make eight plus another four equals 12, okay? Um, so we've got, uh, in the green one, we've got a whole 10 frame. So we've got 10 plus two equals 12. So we're grouping our numbers in different ways, making different combinations with our numbers using the 10 frames. I wonder if you can change it around and make yours differently. What would you do? Have a think about it and see if you can create some different ways with your 10 frames at home. Okay, so now this is Jump Back Jill. She does amazing backflips along the number line. She's going to help us to subtract. Wow, amazing. I think she needs to be at the Olympics. 
Jill always lands on 10 as she knows it's not wobbly. Watch her work out 14 take away 4. Do you know where she's going to land? There might be a little hint there. Have a think. Where is she going to land? Oh, amazing. And she landed on the number 10. That's right. Amazing, Jill. So 14 take away 4 equals 10 because she went back 1, 2, 3, 4 places. Where do you think Jill will land if she does these subtractions? So 16 take away 6, 19 take away 9, 13 minus 3, 15 minus 5, and 17 minus 7. So have a think where you think she would land on a number line. In your Google Classroom, you will find a number line that will also help you. You might already have one from other days. Um, uh, so you could use this number line to help you visualize where you think Jill would land if she had any of these subtraction problems. And let's take a look on the next slides to see the answers. Oh, there we go. Did you, did you guys get it? Was it 10? Well done if you got it, that's great. What do you notice about these? Why do you think this happens? Okay, help Jill work out 13 minus 5. Oh, that's a bit trickier, isn't it? Because it's going to be more than 3, so it's going to be a little bit harder to work out. Okay. So remember, she will jump back to 10 first. Use your 10 frame to show how you will petition 5. So you've got your 10 frame there, and she needs to jump back to 10. She's on 13, and now you need to try and petition the number 5 in a different way. So let's see what Jill does to help us. If she jumps back three, she will land on 10. That's right, so she will land on 10. And we've got our 10 frames here. Okay. So if she's moved back three spaces, so one, two, three, we've got something left over here. So we have to petition our number five. So over here, we need to find what other number is here. Can you guys work it out? I know, five is three and two. Did you have that on your 10 frame? Is that one of the ways that you would petition the number five? So she now needs to jump back two more spaces. So 10 minus 2 equals 8. Okay, let's try that again. So 13 minus 3 equals 10. And there she is, back to 8. 10 minus 2 equals 8. 13 minus 5 equals 8. So we, we were able to do that by jumping back to 10 and adding 2 more to our 3 jumps. So that helped us by going back to 10 first. It's a bit tricky, I know, but I think you guys will get it. Okay, help Jill work out 16 minus 9. Use your 10 frame to show how you'll petition 9. So have a think 
we need to, what, what number do we need to get back to first? That's right, we need to get back to 10 first. So how far will Jill have to go back to get to 10? And then what will be left over from nine? Have a think about it, and then we'll work it out on the next slide. Okay, so here we have 16 minus nine, and we need to partition. So Jill has had to move to 10. So how many spaces was that? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. If she jumps back six, she will land on 10. Okay, so we need to find out what is left over for her to jump back all the way nine spaces. So how many more spaces until she's jumped back nine spaces? I know nine is a six and a three. Did you know that? I bet you did. So she now needs to jump back three more. She will land on seven. So there we go. Let's take a look. Fourteen minus four equals ten. Ten minus two equals eight. And fourteen minus six equals eight. Okay, let's see if you can do this one yourselves. I bet you can. Nineteen minus twelve. Okay, so we're getting to the bigger number, but we've already had a practice at petitioning these before. So you could even go back in the video if you wanted to have a look at 12, because it might help you petition the number 12. Or you can just do it with your counters in front of you with the 10 frame. So if she jumps back nine, she will land on 10. Nineteen minus nine equals ten. So twelve is a nine and a three. She now needs to jump back three more. So ten minus three equals seven. She will land on seven. Let's take a look. Nineteen minus nine equals ten. Ten minus three equals seven. Nineteen minus twelve equals seven. Now it is your turn. Number one, complete the subtraction one PDF. Number two, there is an optional subtraction um, PDF for you to try. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it is an option and it gives you some practice on uh, combining some different numbers together to help you with um, bridging to 10. Uh, you then you can use some hands-on materials as well to help you with this task um, by following the link. And number three, there's some op optional games for you to play. And finally, an optional sing-along math song for you. Okay, good luck with everything. I am sure you will do really well with this task. In your pack, you will find um, this activity and this is an opportunity for you to do it yourself. Uh, you can use your own 10 frames and your own um, number line that you've either made or that are in your pack in your Google Classroom. And then you can go and solve these problems. So you can just write it on a piece of paper and show you're working out. This is just another strategy to help you solve subtraction problems. Some of you might know these because we're at the moment we're just working with numbers under 20. Um, but as it gets a little bit harder, this is a great strategy to fall back to um, and help you. So some of you might already have those number facts that are helping you solve these today. 
but it would be really great for you to practice these ideas so that when we use larger numbers, you have another strategy to use. Okay.